Here's how to use the new updated import and export menus in Adobe Premiere Pro. So upon launching Premiere Pro, you still get to your home screen with your recent projects. But now when you click new project, you're introduced with this new import menu. And if you notice at the top, you have your home tab, your import tab, and edit and export tabs. So when you click new project, you start at the import tab and you can choose a project name. So you can choose whatever you want. You can choose a project location. That, that's where the project will be saved. And you have a few different folders to start picking up footage from. So here's some sample media. And if you thumb through it, it'll show you a sort of preview of what's going on. You can change the size of these thumbnails or organize them by list view. And you can also sort them in different ways like by duration or name and things like that or search for clips. So this is just sample media, but you, I, you can also go to any folder that you've created on your desktop or your downloads folder. And once you start clicking and highlighting clips, it will start putting them in your new bin or sequence that you're going to create. So as I click, I can start to see the order that they're in. Um, I guess it would be interesting if I could move them around here, but it doesn't seem like that feature is available. But from here on the right hand side, you can choose the import settings. So let's say we just wanted to create a new bin with all of these six clips in it. If I press create, that'll create a new project and there won't be anything on the timeline, but it will have organized a bin for us with whatever those clips were. Now, if I close this project, file close, just to show you, I can still always just simply open an old project or if I press new project, if I don't want to deal with any of this, or maybe I just want to start off, I don't want to pick anything right now. I can just press create like this. It's just saying I already have a project named untitled. So I'll just press replace. And now I just still get to my edit tab here, which is my project media panel, my timeline, my program window, everything that you're used to. And you can always still import media in the traditional ways, such as drag and dropping clips in this project media panel or importing them in through the project media panel and media browser. Or just go to file, new, and you can start making new sequences or media files in whatever size you want. So if you are confused by that import screen or you don't want to use it, you can just use it to just create a project. It just gives you additional options here if you want to start your project with a amount of clips inside of a bin that you can name, or if you just want to start your clip with the sort of skeleton of your project. So this is a new sequence and it'll be created with these six clips in whatever order I click to them in, as you can see. So if I press import, this will do the same thing, except this time it'll put them all into a sequence, sort of like a skeleton for us, if you want to edit that way when it's applicable. Do keep in mind that your sequence size will be created to match the size and dimensions of whatever the first clip inside of it is. So in this case, this was a 1920 by 1080 clip. I can know that by clicking on it and going to the info tab. So the entire sequence, as we can see, is a 1920 by 1080 sequence. So keep in mind if you're working with a mix of vertical or 4K footage that it's just going to base it on the first clip that you're working with. So for example, this clip is a 4K clip inside of this 1080p sequence. So we actually have some room to scale. Whereas if we would have did it the other way, the 1080p clips would have needed to be scaled up. A quick tip for you, just as a side note, is you can always right click clips and choose scale or set to frame size. And those will automatically scale or set your project to the frame size. I have a whole video on that if you're confused or want to understand more. And I also have a video on understanding sequence sizes. If you'd also like to understand more, you can find those on my channel. Just use those keywords. But basically from this point on, you can edit all in the traditional ways that you're used to. Everything's still here and you can create and save your project and whatnot. Now you can also export in the traditional way with by going to file, export, media, but now instead of that pop-up window, it'll take you to this new tab, which you can also just click over to tab over to the export tab. 
So it's sort of like the import menu. Now this export menu is a little different looking. All of the same features that you're used to are still here. They're just presented perhaps in a more friendly way as the attempt. And so we have our preview window where we can choose, we could see what's on our sequence. We can choose the range of exporting. So the entire source, or if you had created an in and out point, you can just export a segment. But over here in the settings, we can choose the file name. We can also choose where it's going to export to. So wherever on your hard drive or desktop that you want it. And we have our presets. So to start off, there's only a handful of presets like high quality and match source. Match source being it will just match whatever the sequence size and settings are, which as we saw was matched based off the clip size. So they've sort of tried to streamline the most common or frequent options here for you. But if you ever want, you can go into more presets and they still have all the other ones here. So if I needed to export ProRes, for example, I can favorite that preset like you saw, press OK, and then that'll also be added to my list. You can also choose the format. So whether you just needed audio or QuickTime or H.264 is usually the standard right now. And you can choose the preset based on the format. Now you still have all these other tabs such as video if you needed to do some custom adjusting. So let's say I wanted to export a square video for a different social media platform. I can still go to custom and I can do like a 1080 by 1080. So I can make a square video, except to unlock the proportion I'm typing right, 1080 by 1080. And we can do a square sequence if we want. We could do scale to fit or stretch to fill or scale to fill. Those are just different ways of choosing the crop. But obviously, if you know you're making a square sequence, you might as well start that way in the beginning so you can edit appropriately instead of just scaling everything at the end. And you have all your other basic options that you used to have if you need to adjust them. Additionally, you'll notice there's all these tabs now to upload directly to YouTube or directly to Facebook or something like that, where you can sign in and write the title and description and upload directly to these platforms. But if you're like me, I sort of just like to upload traditionally and post them wherever I want later. And once you're ready, you can still either send to Adobe Media Encoder, which is like the queue button that used to be there. And that will send it over to the Adobe Media Encoder queue where you have more options and you can choose to export multiple things at once. Or you can just export it right now with these settings to the location that you chose. So then it should look familiar. It'll say encoding sequence and finished and the final product will appear on your desktop. So if you'd still like to learn more about Adobe Media Encoder or how to export, I also have full separate videos on those. And I also have separate videos on basically all of the menus, the project media panel and different panels inside of this edit menu if you're confused about that. But this has been a basic update to the interface of the import and export menus. And hopefully this has gotten you familiar with how to use these new updates. My name is Justin Odisho. If you enjoyed this video, you can subscribe here on YouTube and check out tons more videos on my channel. Thank you so much for watching and I'll see you in the next one.